Are you looking for an all HF band portable antenna that you can set up really fast? What if you only have a few minutes to do a quick park activation? This could be one possible solution. Is the Chameleon Empath Light right for you? Let's find out. Hi, thanks for joining me in the House of Ham. I'm Bob, WV7W, and this time we're going to take a look at the Chameleon Antennas and Past Light as our next installment in my Antenna Addiction Series. Antenna Addiction Series. Antenna Addiction Series. Since this channel is fairly new, I don't have companies sending me stuff, so I bought this with my own money and am not receiving anything from Chameleon Antennas for doing this review. The Empass Lite is the little brother to the highly popular Empass 2.0, or Modular Portable Antenna System. It is comprised of this matching unit, which is a 5 to 1 transformer. The Lite version has the hybrid micro matching unit, which can handle 100 watts single sideband and 50 watts CW and digital, compared to the larger hybrid mini, which can handle 500 watts single sideband and 250 watts CW and digital. Now this can be used in a variety of configurations, including vertical, sloper, inverted V, inverted L, and Envis, or near vertical incident skywave. And there's probably some other configurations as well, but I'm going to focus on the vertical, which uses this 17-foot uh, whip. Along with the matching unit is the whip, the stainless steel ground spike, 60 feet of wire, which can be used as either an antenna element or like we're going to use it today as a counterpoise. And it also has this little screw which can be used on the matching unit to hang it. It also comes with 50 feet of ABR RG58 coax with an RF choke on one end. And this is really good quality coax. The Empath Light does not come cheap. At the time of this video, it's about 360 bucks, so it may be a bit too rich for those of you that aren't true antenna addicts. So the question is, is it worth it? And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to answer that for yourself. Let me go set this thing up so you can see how quickly you can deploy it. The setup of the MPAS light is actually really easy. Just attach the ground spike and the 17 foot whip onto the transformer. And then I extend the whip up starting at the top section and working my way down till I get it fully deployed. Then on the uh, ground spike, there's a little red knob and you unscrew that and then hook up your counterpoise wire and go ahead and extend that out to its full length. Um, and then after you're done with that, then the last thing to do is to go ahead and attach the coax. And after that, you are ready to go and start using this antenna. So you can see by the clock that it did not take that long to set up. The real speed, though, is in band switching, as you don't need to do any tweaking of the antenna itself. Now, that being said, it is not a resonant antenna, so you will need an antenna tuner. Let's do some on-the-air tests of this antenna, but before we do, I'm going to hook up my Rig Expert stick so we can look across all the hand bands and see how the SWR is before bringing in the tuner. So, using my Rig Expert stick and the ham uh, sheet, um, for each band, it, you know, it shows you the full band. For 80 meters, it's uh, 2.9 to 1. Um, you'll notice that they're pretty flat across the uh, individual bands there, as opposed to having a dip like you'd see with a resonant antenna. Uh, 40 meters, 3.1 to 1. Uh, 30 meters is 2.3 to 1. Um, 20 meters is uh, 1.5 to 1, which is, you could really use it without a tuner um, and do fine. Um, 17 meters, 1.38 to 1. Again, you could do it without a tuner if you wanted to. Um, 15 meters, 1.54. Again, uh, you could skip the tuner and get away with it. Um, 12 meters, uh, 2.3 to 1. Probably going to want to use a tuner for that. And um, 10 meters is 2.2 to 1. So you would need that a tuner for that one as well. And then uh, finally, 6 meters is 2.1 to 1. So probably would want to use a tuner for the 6 meter portion as well. So let's put this thing to the real test and try it out on my KX2. For each band, I will throw out a couple of CWCQs, and then we'll look at the reverse beacon network so we can see how well we're getting out there. Surprisingly, 
uh, 80 meters tuned up really fast. Considering it was 2.9 to 1 on the analyzer, I was kind of surprised it tuned so quickly. Uh, the one mistake I made before I started sending out CQs, I didn't send a uh, QRL to see if the band was in use. That's a mistake I did not repeat as I went on to the other bands. Um, you you want to make sure you're being a courteous ham, so you should always check and make sure the band's not in use before you start throwing out CQs. Now I won't make you listen to all the CQs and just waste a bunch of your time, so we'll only see them for the first one, but I did two rounds for each of these. Um, as we moved on to 40 meters, um, it, it tuned up uh, more as I expected. took a couple seconds, but still got to one-to-one. -one. Um, and I did do QRL on this one, so uh, like I did all the others. There again, you won't see uh, this for most of the bands, because I'm just going to go ahead and show you the tune-up on the rest of them so you can see. But just uh, every band was uh, with two rounds of CQs after a QRL. On 30-meter band, it went really quick. Uh, same with on the 20. Uh, which is kind of be expected. It was 1.5 to 1, so I didn't expect to take long. 17-meter um, band, uh, again, very, very quick. 15-meter band was pretty quick. And uh, it wasn't until we got to the 12-meter band, it took a couple seconds. And then on the 10-meter band, it also takes a couple seconds. But, uh, you know, this the tuner inside the KX2 is really good, and so it, it does a really good job. So Murphy's Law, of course, got in the way. This was not what I was expecting and not indicative of what I have seen of this antenna in the past. Um, I was certainly expecting more than this. I thought at first might be band conditions, although they're not as they're not horrible. Although that A index is a little high and, the, and, it, and it did seem like there was quite a bit of noise. Although if you look at that chart, it certainly doesn't show that. It shows it is quiet. So... Um, Anyhow, um, maybe should have used um, Whisper or something like that. But the bottom line is Whisper is not um, how I make contacts. <laughs> I make contacts usually with CW, you know, occasionally with uh, FT8 or, or sideband. So um, you, you can decide for yourself. But uh, like I said, my real world example of this is not indicative of what I've seen here. So as you can see, switching bands is really quick and easy, particularly compared to antennas like the Buddy Stick or the Wolf River Coil that require adjusting for each band. This can be really handy for POTA activations where you may need to hop around a bit to get a legit activation. In my real world usage, I found the MPAS Lite to perform very well and made quite a few contacts with it. I tried it side by side with my super antenna's MP1 and the MPAS did much better. That stands to reason, as it stands about three times as tall. Will this thing perform as well as a dipole? Nope. But there is one thing to remember about all of these less than Unity antennas, is that you're trading performance for convenience. Now, a Unity gain antenna is one where the power radiated is equal to the power going into it, or at least theoretically. Now, a half-wave dipole in free space is usually considered a Unity antenna. So the bottom line is all of these convenience antennas are going to have a certain amount of loss. Does that mean they aren't any good or don't perform well? Not at all. In fact, they can perform really well, but they typically won't beat a dipole or a beam. The laws of physics just won't allow it. The only possible exception is if you cannot get your dipole up high enough and you want to get some DX. In those situations, a vertical may win out. You really just need to manage your expectations and understand the limitations. And this goes for most aspects of our hobby. For this antenna, there is loss in the matching transformer as well as the loss in your tuner. So is this worth the $360 price tag? Well, that really depends. The build quality is top notch. Chameleon uses fresh rate materials and puts a lot of craftsmanship into all of their products. The whip is pretty darn sturdy. I'm sure you could still break it, but if you use a reasonable amount of care, it should serve you for many years. Even the quality of the coax and the counterpoise wire is first rate. So what are the things that I do like, and what are the things that I don't? I like the super quick setup and band changes. I like how well it performs compared to some other verticals. So what don't I care for? It is a bit heavy. Not too bad for a park activation, but I don't think I'd want to pack it up to a summit. It's also a bit long, so I don't know that it would really fit into a backpack well. Once again, not showstoppers, but things to keep in mind. Finally, 
Since it isn't a resonant antenna, you have to bring a tuner, which adds complexity to your setup. So am I happy with it? And would I buy it again? I would, but as we've already established, I'm an antenna junkie, so I cannot really resist. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please hit that like button. And if you want to know when I put out the next video, please consider subscribing. Until next time, 73s.